Okay, on the Airflex 16 here, this is an older model. It has the original type telescope, the non removal type. And this particular model on here, unit here, has got to where the torque on here varies uh, because there's some chips down inside on a gear. And so I'm going to show you here if you go ahead and undo this, back that off, and pull the motor out. Motor is keyed right here. Little key feature goes into here. But this is a DC motor with a rheostat. And this spins around here. And so if I go in there and look down inside there, I can go through and uh, if I put a pair of gloves on, I can go through and spin the mirror box around like this. Or if I just make sure I'm just touching just the edge of it. And what I discovered down in there is right down on there on a gear that's below the rubber piece, rubber coupler, there's some chips. So what I did is I took through and got in here like this and just take, took off little pieces of film that must have been from a jam and then I transferred them over here on a paper so I've got all these little pieces of film uh, sprocket holes or some crud that I've got out and now it runs true in the sense the torque is nice and uniform so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in there and the proper way of course is to go through and take the whole unit apart for a uh, you know to get it overhauled but this way I went in there and uh, make sure your hands are clean I re revolve the either run the coupler around you grab the coupler here you can spin this around and on this gear there were little pieces of film chips so I was able to go through and just pull them out they stuck to this uh, Clarence O'Brien letter maker letter opener and I was able to get out a whole bunch of them and then on the piece of paper here is probably just about a third of them. I had probably a dozen little pieces of chips and technically this unit needs to be completely overhauled but that's the reason why the torque seemed to vary. This spins around here like this. The couplers on there I'm not sure if they make those anymore. This gets to be kind of, the rubber may not tend to grab. So what happens if you've got a jam in there that's not cleared, the end of the motor here is going to go through and try to spin in that coupler. That's got a little piece that looks like, uh, looks like that. That's the motor contact right here. So I believe, I believe the frame is negative and that's positive. And so the rubber coupler is here. That's just the end of a Sharpie. I can spin that around. So I was able to spin that around and get in there. We'll see if we can zoom in some more. And there's that gear. There's probably a lot more. So this is sort of like just a panic thing. I learned this from a guy at college. I took a film course from a guy from... They visited from uh, South Carolina Film School back in the dark ages. And so on this 16, it had the same problem. Now to put the motor back in there, there's a key right here. There's that feature. Goes in. like that so it's flush and it locks this is the uh, this particular model is a was for Europe so this is actually in meters so this goes to normally they're in feet in the USA this is uh, 30 meters the zero in here it's about 33 34 meters 35 meters. This is of course in frames. 
and when you revolve this around this is going to move the frame counter on here of course this is the tachometer most of them go to 50 uh, I think some actually go to 60 I've seen and there's the mirror that's down in there and I was doing what you shouldn't be doing I would, was just touching the edge of this to spin it around which is probably very taboo so it's got a spinning bow tie mirror that's in there so I was actually going through here and just moving this with the end of my finger like that and this is, of course is a model that uh, uses Airflex standard doesn't have the bayonet. There's one of these that has two slots on it, which is the SB model. You pinch this together, take off a lens, and this particular lens right here is actually one that was made before the 16 millimeter came out. This is one that was marketed for 35 millimeter. This is a 3.5 centimeter F2 Biotar. Carl Zeiss and this particular one with the serial number is around 270,000 or 2.7 million which puts it around I think built in 1941 in Gina that's one of the first coded lenses if I believe that uh, but this lens was made for 35 millimeter a 35 millimeters got the same flange distance if you put a 16, a one that's designed for 16 millimeter and a 35, you, you may not have the coverage. Uh, I think on a 35 millimeter area, I think the widest that's normal with a regular lens is around uh, 28 millimeters. There's some super wide angles, but I mean the one that's just a regular lens design. I think in a xenon, a 28 millimeter will cover. 35 and I think a 25 millimeter like this one is designed just for 16 uh, 16 millimeters so you, you have vignetting you'll have dark corners so both the 35 millim lenses for 35 millimeter which is this one and 16 millimeter both fit in here uh, you said you have to be aware of some don't have the coverage uh, for 35 millimeter so if you had a 50 millimeter lens for 35 millimeter it'll work of course on the 16 because you got plenty of coverage this little feature here there's a little dog there's a dot over here like right there's a dot so you find this that's also where the tick mark is here for in, for uh, focusing or the f-stop you just line those up and you squeeze this together and the SB model has two slots in here for the bayonet so this particular one here there's the little finger I can put it in here like this squeeze it this is, of course is the turret this is the on off And what that does, this one was made for Germany. This is closed, Z, and A is for open. Obvious, right? This is the electrical contact here, which makes the camera go. The frame, I believe, is negative and there's the positive contact that's going to go through this switch here so when you load the film in here you can goose this to make sure the film is uh, transporting through there there's the film gate now to service this whole thing you go through and take off this the switch and then you gotta take all those guts out of here and I believe you take these pieces off but that's to get this out 
and if you get in too deep you're going to have to have some alignment tools so uh, I may or may not take this apart and there's people that do this and I don't do that but there's people on the internet that do that I want to say it's 400 bucks or something to go 450 or 500 to clean it all out so if you get a used one it can be to where it's kind of gummy action so what's happened is this probably was a jam some chips got down in here and got stuck down into this chamber somehow that was down into here and that's the rubber coupler that little piece right there I'm shining a flashlight on that's the contact that touches the motor you can see the wire goes on there and after a while it gets all kind of goofed up in there and in the sense you get gummy action in there so a used camera can be problematical in the sense that it uh, these are built to run a long time but uh, it can be to where you've got sluggish action and then your coupler in there is going to go through and uh, not have enough it's going to elongate and rot out to where it's not being driven by the motor here of course on the motor this is just a simple one has arbitrary numbers this is actually a rheostat so when you've got voltage hooked up to here it's connected up to the motor you can just hook this up to like ground and say six to eight ten volts something like this and you can spin this around and this will vary in speed through here and then you've got other motors that are uh, faster or constant 24 frames there it is clicked in place locked this is the piece here for the using a 200 to 400 foot magazine this comes undone through here there's where the film goes through that there's the tripod socket this particular one's got a 3 eighths and then a quarter 20 of course it's got the revolving mirror so when this spins around through here uh, let me turn this around with the coupler. You can see the mirror right there. Now the light is shining to the viewfinder. Now it's actually shining. Uh, right there is actually the shining on the film. There it is shining on the view viewfinder so you can focus. So it's what you see is what you get. Exposing the film. And there it is shining on that. That's a first surface mirror, so you really don't want to be doing this as far as in a area that's dusty where you want to put any fingerprints on there, because that's a, a first surface mirror and also any dust you can get in there can get on the film which is kind of a disaster this is the shoe here for the mat box there's the infinity symbol if you want to measure uh, for scale focus of course there's the tachometer and these are the take up these are keyed two different ways so this one will go counterclockwise this one will go clockwise I believe the later model this is an this is an older model I think the uh, the first I don't know if it's first there's some serial number I don't know if it's 5600 or something to where there's a different cover over there's a cover over this that covers the springs and this will look a little bit different and there's the sprocket drive 
course it's got a registration pin which makes the imagery rock solid there's a pin right there and if I revolve this around you can see the pin so this pin here goes into the film sprocket hole this is what advances it so you've got a piece here that's going through and moving it down but when it's doing the exposure the film is held absolute still because you've got a pin that goes through the sprocket sprocket hole when I got all this exposed like this, you got all this optics here, so that's not the best thing to be doing. I'm just doing this for the video. Um, you load the film, you're done, you click this back. Of course, you can run this through to make sure you've got it loaded. You can load this in subdued light, and then once you got the cover on, you need to go ahead and run it some. When you load this and you push this down, you see the film run through correctly, and then you put the cover on. My particular model here, the this pin sometimes tends to come out. Um, so if you're sitting there doing a, a load on something and you uh, want to make sure that you don't pin doesn't get lost, and then this is the viewfinder here. This is Carl Jice Gina. This is the diopter. The later models this has got a removable eyepiece. You can also put a, a, a bend in it, 90 degree bend. And so the uh, first models you can tell has this feature like this. It looks different. Eye cup smaller. This is smaller in diameter. The later models, this is larger diameter, and I believe it's removable. Of course, this is the on-off switch. When you put the cover on and off, you want to go through and make sure you uh, have this in the position that it's up. So that's making the camera run. This is off, so you don't have to hold it down when you're taking pictures. what that's doing is pushing here on this pin like this there's a pin sticking out right here so when you're loading fin film you don't want to have this pushed out you want to have it to where this is up like that when you load some film so this is pushed into the body this is the cam here that runs the uh, open close the Z on this particular model is close which I think in the other models are have a C this reads in meters this holds your hand like this course when you're going to go ahead and use the one lens you rotate this around this one's a little bit tough to move so probably the grease down in here is kind of gummed up F2 this lens here reads in meters the Airflex lenses on here some of them are in meters some are in feet all depends on who they were how they were marketed this one's here in meters. And on the bayonet model, with the slots on it, there's some lenses that have a bayonet that will not fit the SB model. Uh, there's a zoom lens I've seen. I think it's uh, that it says right on the nose of the lens. Uh, it's for the SR, I believe, but it won't. It, will interfere and hit the uh, sticks in too far it'll actually hit the mirror so 
just because it's an SB lens, most of the time it'll fit an SB camera, but a lot of times it won't. Uh, and they generally mark the lens so that you'll know you don't do something stupid. And put the motor back in, of course. There's the key. Key slot. And when you're putting this in, this little thing is going into the rubber piece. So you really don't want to have any. Uh, this really needs to be fairly dry. You don't want to have any type of oil in there, or anything that's going to spin inside that rubber piece. So if you've been handling this thing, kind of wise to go through and get some of the crud off that so it'll grab the rubber a little bit better. That's flush. This is locked down. When you load some film on it you want to have this thing set to it's a slower position so that you can just make sure that the film is advancing. You don't need to go full bore and then you vary this to go through and vary. You set it to 24 there's the red mark right there for 24. This is for reverse. You turn it this way. For R. Forward in this particular model has a V. Now when you're filming, this is going to be spinning around. So you can't, you don't want to have anything touching this or it's going to, you know, screw up your shut your uh, film speed. And when you stop, the screen can be blank and so you need to advance this around till you can see the screen because uh, when you stop the mirror that's down in here like this may just randomly stop where it wants to so if you go in here and look at this there it's sort of touching the, the mirror to where you can see through it but if you went through and you can be to where it stopped and it's right on a darn full frame there's nothing to prevent this thing from stopping uh, like this so it's actually exposing that frame so that's why that's the inching knob you need to go through and turn this around to get it to where you can see through the viewfinder. So if you stop this thing and you've, uh, you know, you can't see, it's kind of wise to turn this so you can see through it because otherwise you've got this thing exposed uh, with the lens open, just sending light. It's going to have, you'll, it's pretty easy to see where you've got to stop the camera for that clip because you're going to get a totally, uh, frame's going to be all white if it's in reversal film or it's going to be black if it's in uh, non-reversal negative film these things are pretty beefy this one's a little bit tough to turn use a detent right there some hoys a hook Another one over here. Somebody's labeled this for plus or minus. Sometimes people have a modification where they have a XLR connector up here for this. Instead of using that, I have one that plugs in under here. Okay, here's a lens that's an exception. This is for Airflex. 16 SR only. So this is an Airflex SB lens, but it only fits SR because the nose is too sticks out too much. This is a second lens, seconds Verisonar, 10 to 100 millimeters. In this particular one I got really cheap because it looks like somebody dropped it, but actually this works real well. Use it on a 
four thirds camera sometimes but this will not fit on a 16 millimeter uh, SB model because the nose just sticks out too much.